This episode is brought to you by Audible. They're the world's leading provider for audiobooks with over 150,000 titles to choose from. You get one free just by going to audible.com slash iced tea. That's right. You get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash I-C-E-T just for listening to this show. Considering the way music is right now, you're better off listening to a book, an audio book. Real readers get their audio books from Audible. Upon initial contact with Ice-T's music, I had envisioned him to be an ill-mannered and psychologically unstable man with an extremely uneducated and barbaric frame of mind. His raps displayed nothing but ridiculous jargon, shocking sexual audacity, and repulsive images of the ghetto. However, after further analysis of his music, I can deduce that he is the epitome of anti-disestablishment terrorism, who embodies the entire spectrum of the urban experience and struggle. But to make things more plain and simple to the layman, I find Ice-T to be the dopest, flyest, OG pimp, hustler, gangster player, hardcore motherfucker living today. To be honest, I am totally and completely on his dick. Welcome to the Ice T Final Level Podcast, featuring your co-host, Mick Benzo, and your host, Ice T. Hey, yo, what's up? Welcome back to episode five of the Final Level Pop. Mickey, we on five, baby. We on, we on five already. Final Level Podcast number five. Can you believe? We made five episodes of this shit, man. And it's going good. The numbers are continually growing. I want to thank everybody out there that's been supporting us. All, like I say, all our Dungeons and Dragons people, all the gamer people, all the SVU people, Ice Loves Coco people, the Mick Benzo fans. I want to I want to say thanks to the people for Ice and Mick at Gmail. We got a lot of people hitting us up. That's Mickey, dope. you're getting a fan base here, man. A lot I of mean, people. I had a fan base when I was on Zulu Beats. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got a fan base on the podcast. This is the but infamous no, but the, Mick but Benzo. The girls are sending you pictures. Hey, but I do, they, they may have got that from Zulu Love. You know I'm the Zulu Love man, too, man. You know, I got a lot got of things happening. You got a Zulu Love? Yeah. I'm on Blackberry Soul Radio. I do a show uh, called Zulu Love. It's from Sunday to Thursday from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. It's nothing but make baby music. It's for lovers only. They call me the Zulu Love Man. So the pictures that they send into the podcast is really because they understand that you, I got that Smokey Robinson on me, baby. <laughs> you the Zulu Love Man. You're killing me. So, Mick, it was, it, it, this was a big birthday month for everybody. Yeah, but last one, we celebrated a birthday mm-hmm. uh, in New York City. I had a good time, though, you know, but you know yeah. what, Ice? When you have a birthday, it seems like people want you to be happy because it's your birthday. I don't understand this show. Yeah, yeah, but me and Mickey both, we're, we're very similar. We, we we had a party out here. We call it the Aquarius party. It's for people that are, are Aquariuses. But I'm not the kind of guy that, like, because it's my birthday, I want you to celebrate it. You know, some people walk up to you, yo, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. I'm like, so fuck it. It's not my birthday, motherfucker. Why? Right. <laughs> Why are you so, you want me to be overly excited about your birthday and I really don't give a fuck, truthfully. You know, yeah. I care about Coco's birthday. Oh, that's coming up too. That's coming up. Because, Coco's my wife, and I'm wife. glad she was born. But yeah. why do you think I'm so happy that you were born? <laughs> oh, shit, people- see? Oh, that ain't nice, man. See, but that—that's words from the podcast. Only right here, live yeah, with yeah, Ice T yeah, and McBenzo, baby. So I kind of like try to slide past my birthday. I think when kids have birthdays, it's important, you know, because that's a good day for them to get presents. They look forward. When I was a kid, I looked forward to my birthday. I looked forward to Christmas because I knew I was gonna get paid. Something was finna happen, a bike or something, you know. But when you get grown and you still running around talking about it's your birthday. Get over that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Nobody After 25, man, it ain't no goddamn birthday. It's just 365 days that pass and you're one year older. Yeah, That's and you're all. lucky you made it. That's what right. I say. You're lucky you made it another motherfucking year. If you want to keep having birthdays, get the fuck out of my face telling me it's your fucking birthday. I could give a fuck. This episode's brought to you by Nature Box. Nature Box is a dope subscription service that sends you great tasting snacks right to your door. Nature Box is great for the home, office, or any player on the go. It's like Christmas every day when the best dried California peaches or French toast granola or cocoa almonds or, and Big Island pineapples arrive at your door. Trust me, when your first Nature Box comes in, hide the pineapple. 
because it's going to cause problems with your marriage if both y'all got to fight over it. You understand me? For 50% off your first Nature Box, go to naturebox.com iced tea, okay? What are you waiting for? That's N-A-T-U-R-E-B-O-X dot com slash I-C-E-T. So let's just start this podcast off with sports. The biggest thing that happened this year, uh, you know, I mean, really, was the Olympics. The Winter Olympics. Yeah. It's cold in the motherfucker. Nigga, I got cold watching that shit. Let's make it clear. There's one reason you don't see niggas at the motherfucking Winter Olympics is because it's cold, it's cold man. man. We don't it's do cold. that. It's we cold. don't. I don't fuck around. I'm not sliding and shit. I go outside, I look at the snow, and then I'm getting my punk ass indoors, man. Would you do the bobsled? I do the bobsled before I do the skeleton. Oh, shit. You see the skeleton? It's a beast. Where they lean forward, head first, 90 miles an hour? Unbelievable. How do you make a mistake in that sport? You bust your fucking head like Flappy Bird. <laughs> Fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't fucking with it. I can't, I really can't fuck with it it's just like yo man and then they got the jamaican bobsled team they like oh, a well, lot of mercy i told some people they said well you know you have the jamaican bobsled i said you know what them niggas is running so fast they're Why? trying to get indoors <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're man. trying to get to the end of the run nah, that's crazy. where it's warm fuck but that since we're on the subject of sports and all in all actuality sports is something that is a competition thing and that's what the olympics was that was kind of fly but we we got a real Ice athlete. T with and us. Mick Benzo got a real person in the building at the final level podcast number five. He go by the one and only by the indie race car driver, Mr. Motherfucking Marco Andretti in the <laughs> building. Ooh, ooh. What's up, Marco? Do you know this is family? What's up, Mark? Man. How you doing? <laughs> oh, shit, see? I think we made him nervous. Was, he ain't yeah, that driving. One, that was one introduction. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, those of y'all that don't know, Marco Andretti is the grandson of probably one of the most famous race car drivers in the world, Mario Andretti. His father is Michael Andretti. And, uh, you know, he's basically race car royalty. He's a family member because uh, he has Moody is his dog, which is the daughter of Maximus, who is the son of Spartacus. But, you know, he's over here, and this is my dude, right? And, and a lot of people look at Indy race car driving, and they go, that's not no sport. Well, how fast do you actually go? Uh, I mean, top speed's knocking on the door of 240 miles an hour. Have you ever hit a wall? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they don't move. <laughs> the wall no. don't move. Yeah, and people die in this sport, too. This is real serious business when you're out there. You know, it's all fun. We sit here with him playing, you know, as the right. homie. But when he goes out there and he competes, I mean, he's putting his life on the line in a real way. So is Mark Andretti competing this year, 2014? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first race is St. Petersburg, uh, March when? 30th. March, yeah, the March the 30th? Yeah, end of the month. So uh, How many you know, races you do a year? I think this year is about 17. Damn. So, yeah. No, so if you if be... you total a car, how do you get another car, man? <laughs> uh, my guy, my guys are the best. I mean, we have uh, we have backup cars as well. Um, but even the backup car takes a minute to get them ready. You know, um, you're definitely gonna miss the rest of the practice. But typically, they're ready for the next practice. I mean, my guys are the best. Wow. How many ovals versus road courses? I want to say there's five ovals this year, something like that. And then uh, the rest are. Or our road course and street course, but you know, IndyCar racing is really diverse, as opposed to to you know even Formula One. We run short ovals, big ovals, and uh, permanent road courses, but also street courses like St. Petersburg. At the end of the month, is we actually shut down an airport and and run on the streets in downtown wow. St. Petersburg. So would would you participate in a bull run? That shit, Ice be riding across <laughs> country. He He's think he racing. He <laughs> think he racing all the way from New York to L. A. You know, doing maybe 195, 200. And he get it's excited. It's illegal though, make I, out there. So the Marco Andretti won't do that? He can't I, do that. He's a I pro. I guarantee, yeah, I wouldn't have a license for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't outrun the helicopter. If anybody if anybody was trying to look up to see you doing an indie race, uh, is there a website they can check out? Or are you on YouTube? Or, you know? I mean, there's IndyCar.com. I mean, you can follow. You know, they can find, they're looking for Marco Andretti. The hell yeah, with I mean, anybody there's MarcoAndretti.com. Yeah, and he's on sure. Twitter. Yeah, okay. Marco and at Marco Andretti. Yeah, now this is the real deal, and I, I mean, I got nothing with respect for this dude. Anybody out there that got a problem with race car drivers, I mean, just take your little bucket 
out on the freeway and get up above 100 miles an hour. And let's just see how long you can hold it at 100, 110 miles an hour. You'll be shitting bricks. Now, at 110, you will be sitting in liquid shit, okay? That's just the average <laughs> motherfucker. No, now, I think it's the turns. Ima- I think it's the turns no, 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 no. that get it. No, 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 let's take it. Now, take that to straight. Hun- that's straight. Now, take that to 230 and then try to pass a motherfucker in a turn. <laughs> Damn. And you telling me these guys ain't athletes. And it's just like, you know, I mean, even driving when we bull run, it's fatigue. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, an average race, like say a 500 mile race, how long does that take? Um, Well, I mean, Indianapolis, the ovals are more mental than physical, but it's still, I mean, if it's hot, like 2012 was, you know, like 95 plus, which means in the race suit, it's over 100 degrees in the cockpit. So it, that could be physical. I mean, how long does the whole race is like take? Three, three hours, three and a half. Three hours. Yeah. Just running, three hours. Yeah, exactly. And some of the, I mean, the road courses are more physical, and they're about, you know, two hours. But sometimes we go yellow free, which is caution free, and we are pushing, like, qualifying every Man, I'd rather lap. get a goddamn video game. I ain't fucking with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you ain't going to die in no video game, Yeah, you know? I'd rather do that. I ain't fucking with that. Marco and Jenny, you're, you're a beast. You're yeah, a mess. Matter, yeah. matter of fact, you might be a little fucking crazy. <laughs> I think yeah. you have to be for sure. And that was real sports. <laughs> nah, with yeah. the real sportsman in the building, not just an average person. 240 miles an hour, three hour driving. <laughs> all right? And if he fuck up, he pulls in and he get a brand new one. Damn, you got money, <laughs> That's man. That's pimping what right the there. Fuck? It's expensive. And that was sports. <laughs> okay, the next segment on the. Final Level Podcast is one of my favorites. It's called, I'm not a hater, but I hate shit. You know what I hate, Mickey? What you hate, Iceberg? I hate potholes. Oh, come on, man. You, I mean, our mayor did the best job they can do. The goddamn, the goddamn mayor came on the news the other day talking about, uh, I'm proud to say uh, in the city we have uh, repaired over 113,000 potholes. I'm like, yeah, all except the one that broke my motherfucking rim. What the oh, fuck shit. is the matter you, with you? You hit the one that they didn't fix. First off, first <laughs> off, let's start with this. Let's start with this. How the fuck do we have 113,000 potholes to begin with? Well, you, they're using cheap tar anyway. And then when that snow come down, because we had a bad snowstorm, that snow, then that funky-ass sort they put on there, it eats it up, and those heavy-ass trucks is banging that cheap tar. And when they lay it down, they're not laying it down right. They're just laying okay, it Okay, 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 okay. So this happens one year, yeah. and then they realize the tar is fucked up, and they put down some good tar, right? No, nah, they ain't putting that same cheap shit there. <laughs> That's why the potholes keep coming back. So is this a hustle? It's a damn hustle. The rim shops are connected too. Oh, they're the, definitely. Yeah, I'm they convinced. definitely are. They definitely are. <laughs> you getting they blowouts do. too? It's ridiculous. Yep. I mean, you have to budget it in if you're going to have aftermarket wheels maybe once every two months. You're yeah. buying new ones. Oh Four my god. Ones. And then and then even one of my homies, he got a ticket for swerving trying to trying to miss a pothole because oh, you can yeah, kill that, somebody that, trying to duck. A po- it's like a yeah. giant slalom. Yeah, we're back to the Olympics. This is the nigga Olympics, and they want to give you tickets for, for driving swerving. fast. They want to give you tickets for you illegal double savvy, parking, man. but they won't give themselves no tickets <laughs> for them goddamn potholes that's tearing up my car, your car, and anybody else's car. Let's start ticketing them. And it's this is just not a New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania problem. I I, I tweeted this out last week, and people were hitting me cross country. <laughs> about potholes. One thing I noticed on the East Coast though, they got potholes on the freeway. Like on a, on a highway. I mean 78 is bad on the way here. Yeah. 78 is bad. So yeah. you can hit a pothole That's at 60 miles an hour. They don't have enough money in Jersey. <laughs> they can't fix the potholes in Jersey. But it's $13 to go through the tunnel. That's their money, not ours. That's right. I hate this shit. I hate it. Potholes. I, I hate it. I hate it. I'm not a hater, but I hate this. I hate potholes, man. I want to. <laughs> I'm mad at potholes. Potholes. The, the <laughs> summer and winter Olympics for New York, New Jersey. <laughs> Missing potholes. Damn it. Pot in your holes. car. And that was, I'm not a hater, but I hate shit. Fuck a pothole. Hey, this is the Final Level Podcast, and this is news. What's going on in the world, Mick? Well, like I said, man, you know, there was a notorious man, number one wanted one time. His name was Bin Laden, but they finally caught up to the number one wanted man a couple of weeks ago, Chapo Guzman. 
You know where he's from, right? Shut up. Now, wait a minute. Didn't I tell you that we don't do anything about the cartel? Ah, Chapo. Ah, ah, ah. Uh. Next story. Are you crazy? Give me another story. Give, tell me, how about a story that won't have assassins at the front door? Try that. I'm going to tell you all a secret. A 78-year-old man in Mississippi family had called the doctors, man. They came and he had no pulse. He had no pulse. They pronounced him dead, put him in the body bag, take him on down. I guess when they was about to start doing it and bombing it, the motherfucker started kicking and yelling like a motherfucker. I got a true story. Years old. I got a true story about this. You ready here? No, this, this is real. You know what really happened? His pacemaker had stopped working and then restarted. That's okay. some crazy shit. Okay, let me tell you a true story about our friend oh, and Tucker. Shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is Los this Angeles, is, California. Now, Tucker was a friend of ours that was like maybe 80 years old, 70 old guy from the neighborhood, grew up around Mickey and them. He moved to L.A. They're practicing in the use of drugs, okay? So they're in there. Let's just keep it real. They're doing coke, okay? <laughs> Kids, don't do this. True this story. Is my, this is a true story. So they're doing blow. So Tucker hits the blow and catches a seizure and falls out on his back. Now, remember, Tucker's like 70 years old doing coke. Seriously. He falls out on the ground dead. So my buddy, he's panicking because he's like, oh, my God. Got drugs in the house. It, it's, it, this is bad. I got a dead body. What am I going to do? So he drags the guy. He's got him by the hands, and he's pulling him out the house because he's going to try to sit him in his car. Because he's, <laughs> oh my god, that's where they're going to find him at. He says, "I can't have a dead body in my house." So he's going to try to set this old guy up in front of his steering wheel, and then like let the cops find him there, or whatever. While he tries to clean up the crime scene, right? <laughs> So he's dragging the dude up out of the house, and when the cold air hit him, Tucker came back to life. Like <laughs> he saved his life. And he woke up. He said, "What's going on? What's going on? What's going on?" He, and he just told him, "Man, nigga, I thought you was dead. <laughs> I'm gonna put you in your gonna car. put you in your car and leave you. But now since you ain't dead, get up." <laughs> oh, that's funny. So man. I, I I understand people get be pronounced dead. And, uh, you know, it, it, that's that's some funny story. And both of these are true stories, though. These ain't no fiction. This is very true. That's crazy, though. Yeah, on another note, man, in uh, the state of Arizona, right, they're not allowing gay people to come into a restaurant to eat. I think that is so fucked up for the simple fact, if you don't like gay people, that's your personal business. They ain't doing nothing but doing the same thing you trying to do is go out and have a good time. And all they want to do is sit down and eat in your restaurant. I think that's real fucked well, up. Well, what happened, Mickey, is they tried to they tried to pass a law, but that got vetoed. They tried to use religion as a way of saying that they could they could discriminate and mm -hmm. say, you know, we don't believe in gays and this, that, and the other. But it's nonsense. But Arizona has always been known to be, you know, late and do dumb stuff. Remember back in the day they didn't want to have the Martin Luther King holiday, mm -hmm. you know. So that's a crazy state right there. And we just got to put the light on, on on Arizona. Like, get your shit together. We're not back in the dark ages, that's motherfucker. That's unconstitutional. F bottom line, is unconstitutional. It's enough that there's discrimination going on. So y'all continue in the damn same thing that we're trying to get away from. Those people ain't bothering you. Yeah. They ain't bothering me. Yeah. Let them sit down and have a goddamn meal, yeah, Arizona. Yeah, that's that's corny. That's corny. You know, our podcast, we don't support that. We don't discriminate. Only thing we discriminate against is dumb fucks. So, Arizona, you get the dumb fuck award uh, on this podcast for trying to say somebody can't come and eat in your restaurant. Food probably sucks anyway in that damn restaurant. <laughs>
Titanfall is the new game. Look, 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 little, little, little Johnny over here yeah, looking so at Johnny me. Johnny know my son know. Mm -hmm. He talking about, so I wanted to play Titanfall. So I get out the new Xbox, I pull it out, blah, 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 blah. And this thing only connects through a cord called an HDMI cord. So I go to my rack, I got a, a nice system, and I decide I'm going to plug it in. Ain't nowhere to plug this shit. So I'm what like, do you do? So I call up the dude. I, I got a tech guy, you right. know, at my crib. I got a lot of electronics. So I say, yo, Steve, I say, how do I plug in? Oh, well, you're 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 not HDMI compatible over there. Because I've had my system, you know, over five years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, can I plug right in the TV? Oh, no, that TV isn't HDMI compatible. If you want to play that new game, you got to buy a new TV. So motherfucker trying to tell your TV was dinosaur? Okay. My motherfucking TV cost some dollars, motherfucker. <laughs> and then I tell people I don't want to buy a new TV. They go, you got money. Let me tell you motherfuckers something. <laughs> Just because a motherfucker got a dollar doesn't mean he wants to spend it on some shit he already has. If I got a TV, why would I want to? Oh, let's go get another. Like, that, that's why motherfuckers stay broke. It's because they would do dumb shit. I'm not going to. Buy a new TV, so I'm pissed right now. So then I'm like, I go to my other TV upstairs. It ain't got an HDMI cable, you know. So then I tell somebody else about it. They go, Oh, your TV doesn't have HDMI. How old is your TV? <laughs> I said I should punch you in your face right now. <laughs> just, just, just the way you, the, your attitude about that shit was fucked up. You dissed me right then, and I should fuck you up for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. I, my, my shit is sitting in no, the box. Can't, can't you get an adapter though? You can get an adapter. Oh yeah, but you when you take when you when you downgrade. Oh see see here's the problem. When you take it from HDMI to the three yellow green and uh, 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 red or whatever the blue green whatever mm -hmm. the fucking core colors are. Mm -hmm. When you, you you take it down, you you lose oh, picture you fucks quality. Fucks your clarity now, up. Now tell that to your tech, tech nerd. Oh shit, he don't like that. Mm -mm. You don't downgrade. You don't mess up your. That's like your telling vision. them they can only, if they fuck they can only stick half their dick in. Oh shit! No, they want to stick like, it all. They oh, want no, it all, no, and no, it's no, got to no, be no, clear. No, no. no got to be clear. Got to be a clear lose, path. You can't lose the quality. Right, the so quality. Like, but I don't give a fuck. I just want to play Titanfall, man. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if Titanfall's blurry. I bet you not... end up buying a new TV. <laughs> yeah, eventually. No, I'm gonna wait till I move into my new crib. Oh yeah, okay. I gotta get new TVs for the new crib. These TVs stay in this pad, and I'm still trying to. Tell you my pad, Marco. Oh, shit. Wow, great. He wants to move into this. Suite. This is elegant. This I think my time's spot. up. Here. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I think that was it. So, I mean, that's your TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's your TV, but it ain't HDMI compatible. So, you know, I, I whatever. So, my beef today in games is, and, and this goes for electronics and iPhones and everything. Just because you got a new piece of equipment, don't force us to buy new shit. Now, I, I can't use my old games, plus now I got to get a new TV just to play the Xbox One. I'm not happy about that. And that was games. Many companies make you take on additional purchases just to use their product, not with Audible. You can listen to your favorite audiobooks on any device, your computer, tablet, Android, or iPhone. WhisperSync even lets you switch devices and save your bookmarks, picking up where you left off each time so you don't miss a word. It even lets you switch between listening and reading so you can go back and forth between Kindle and the audiobook without losing your place. Also, don't forget, if you order a book from Audible and decide early on that it sucks, you can call them up and they'll let you swap it out for another book free of charge. Now that's fly. Audible is the world's leading provider for audiobooks with over 150,000 titles. That even includes my own autobiography, Ice, a memoir of gangster life and redemption, uh, Beyond Good and Evil by Nietzsche, which these are all great titles which everyone should own. They basically have everything. Also remember that you'll soon be able to download the upcoming audiobook of me, reading Dungeons and Dragons on Audible. Imagine that. Feel free to tweet me about the audiobooks you download and let me know your thoughts at Final Level on Twitter. For a free audiobook and a 30-day trial, go to audible.com slash iced tea. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash I-C-E-T. You'll be saving money and helping to keep this podcast free. Thanks again to Audible.
Hey, yo, the Fine Level Podcast. Let's talk about music, Mick. Yo, I want to talk about Rondo Scooch Robinson. His mother was Sylvia Robinson and Joey Robinson. They founded a label in 1979. It was called Sugar Hill Records. They had groups like Sugar Hill Gang, Treacherous Three, Spoonie G, Grandmaster Flash, and the Furious Five, Sequence. Y'all might know that record label. That was one of the first labels that put out first a lot of rap, rap records. First record you know? ever. So her baby son, Mr. Rondo Scooch Robinson, passed away. And the reason being is because, again, we're back again at that male awareness. He had a hernia. He was repaired. He's supposed to go back for surgery, and he didn't go back to the hospital. And that's one of the main reasons I keep yelling male awareness foundation for men. We got to go to the hospital. We just lost one of the greats of Sugar Hill, which is the baby son of Sylvia Robinson and Joy Robinson. That's crazy. A son, the baby, the youngest one. Yeah, Scooch. You know what it is? It's like I'm telling you all the time, man, you know, Mortality is real. And when we was younger, all of the homies was getting shot and going through drama that they were brought on themselves and was mm-hmm. brought onto them by the streets. But now, you know, everybody's got families. We taking care, we're trying to stay healthy. And you can die. You know, just you got to take care of yourself. And I always tell, you know, the big homies, yo, man, you know, how's your weight? You got to care about them. And, 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 and a hernia turning into a death. Trip off this. Talk. I mean, this is music. Right. But, you know, people keep asking me, Ice, what's going on with your house? The guy, my, my contractor just went in the hospital and he's sick. So, you know, sometimes we might seem a little preachy about health and awareness because that's probably because we're dealing with a lot of health issues and people around us. So that's that's serious business, man. You know, God bless him. Sugar Hill Records, for those you don't know, was the first one of the very, very first rap record labels to put hip hop in the game. To put hip hop on a map with the Sugar Hill Gang. Rapper's Delight. Rapper's Delight, one of the biggest records you guys know. But I'm saying, you know, that was the baby son of the Sugar Hill family. The the first the first to go was the last to come. He was the last one to be born and the first one out because of health. The most important thing about the conversation, yes, we did lose you, Scooch, but men across the world, let's go check yourselves out, man. We do care. We care over here. And that's that's that, that's that's a little music history, and a lot of people have been hitting us on the uh, uh, podcast email. Ice and Mick at, at gmail.com. Gmail. And they've been asking me questions about Rhyme Syndicate, you know, like what's going on with the groups that I started. Now, those of y'all don't, don't know, when I started in hip hop, I had an organization called The Syndicate. You all heard of Bad Boy, you heard of, you know, Death Squad, all these different cliques. And uh, NWA had their organization, and I had an organization called The Syndicate that had Everlast, you know, one of the very first white rappers was in it. Um, uh, people like Dub C and Aladdin, who were. Uh, uh, Dub mm-hmm. C is out with Ice Cube right now. Had Muggs, who became the DJ for Cypress Hill. A lot of people that moved off into music. Donald D, Microphone King Donald D, who now lives in Italy. And all those guys have branched out to do other things. You know, they, they are all, a lot of them are still rapping. But the syndicate was just an organization I did. I made an oath to my guys. I said, if I ever get a record deal, I'll try to help you. And that's what I did. I did an album called Syndicate Coming Through. So all those guys have gone off doing their own thing. You know, uh, just, 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 you know, some of them are in music. Some of them are out of the music. One of the guys from Rhyme Syndicate, now that I think about it, was in a group called TDF. His name is Tim Story. He was MC Taste, and he is the director, Tim Story, who d- d- has directed everything from Fantastic Four. What's the other ones he just did? He did all the Kevin Hart movies. Yeah, well, Donald right. D's still working because he goes out with Africa Bambada when Bambada hits Italy and hits uh, yeah, yeah. things like that. So Rhyme Syndicate members are still existing. You know, they definitely out there. Some of them are working like the Microphone King, Donald D. That's, in, that's good because a lot of people ask, where's Donald D? Still in the business, Italy. Yeah, so, you know, Syndicate is out there doing their thing. You know, I, every podcast I keep you abreast what's going on with Body Count. Body Count is booking summer dates right now. Um, the album is being mixed in Australia, and we're going to start doing videos this April out here in New York City. We got a sh- new show that just came uh, on the line. We just booked a new show that's going to happen in Arizona. Mm. Uh, coming up, uh, check the dates in Arizona. That'll be one of the first live shows we will be playing. In, uh, is that the Mayhem? No, that's not the Mayhem Fest. This is just a one-off show in Arizona. It's a festival. So that's Body Count. That's Syndicate. 
uh, Sugar Hill Records, uh, Scudge, rest in peace. And that's music right here at the Final Level Podcast with Mick Benzo and Ice T. Hey, so this is uh, the Final Level Podcast, and we're going to go into the segment known as philosophy. Um, the philosophy I kick out to people every day at Final Level on Twitter is uh, called The Daily Game. The reason I call it The Daily Game is just stuff I've picked up throughout life experiences. I, I could quote shit from Plato and Aristotle and all that, but you know that's not really my true experiences things I try to teach people, and this might sound cold, but nobody cares about your dream but you. You might find somebody that has a similar dream as you, but what you want in life, you're going to have to go get it. Uh, You could sit in front of somebody and tell them, this is my idea, I want to be a rapper, I want to be an actor, I want to be a race car driver, but that's still what you want to do. It's not what they want to do. So you can't expect them to care about it as much as you. And I think people get real butthurt out there because they're like, oh, I want to be an actor and nobody cares. My mom doesn't care. I do care, but I don't give a fuck, really. When, when Marco decided he wanted to be a professional race car driver like his family, he still had to do it. If he didn't want it, no matter how much his dad wanted it, it's not going to happen. It's, it has to be something that's in you, but you're feeling that someone else should care, you're really wasting your time. How you feel about that, Mickey? When you- it's almost like this, Ice. A guru said one time, if you want something bad enough, you'll want it as bad as you breathe. So mm. that makes a lot of sense. Then you can possibly get it. And I sit up sometimes, like right now, like you know, even in my career, there's things I want to do. And I, I, I have to make myself do it. Like I was talking about even just like going in the gym. I mean, going in the gym seems physical, but it's mental. And, and if you're not willing to really push yourself to do it, it's just not going to magically happen. And I can't expect Coco to be like, well, you said you want to go in the gym. You, it's it, it's got to be what I want. So get away from the belief that somebody else cares as much about your dream as you do. That's philosophy for today. Hey, yo, this is the Final Level Podcast. Uh, This next segment I like to call street knowledge. Um, Everybody uh, always asks me questions about the music business and, uh, you know, relationship stuff, but I I just wanted to spend a little time on the streets. A lot of people are like, hey, I, you know, you from the hood, and you this goes on the street. And people always like to walk up to you and say, well, no, that ain't ghetto, or, or that ain't hood. And these are always squares that have never even been in the hood trying to tell you what isn't okay. You know, oh, oh I see. You, you, you've you lost your ghetto pass. I'm like, I have my, my ghetto pass could get you killed, motherfucker. What are you talking about? So I want to explain to you that in the streets, streets are very much like business. And in the street, the people out there playing the game of life, you have two different ways of playing it. One is the dirty way, and one is the clean way. You know, so, I mean, there's cats on the streets. I mean, in my book, I said I'm trying to look for honesty and crime. There's cats out there that are just trying to get their money. They're not into double crossing. They're just trying to get their money. You know what I'm saying, Mickey? That's how yeah, we play Yeah, those are street it. hustlers, man. That's, that's how we is. play Exactly. It. We try to be legitimate, fair. You always say, that's fair. That's fair. But we know there's that other group of people. I'm even willing to say there's cats out there that rob you but got some type of morals about it. I'm talking about the cats that are just playing the game totally foul. You know, rob their buddies. That's the government. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. (laughs) Well, this goes into business, too. Yeah. Because there's people in business that like to play the game fair. And then Mm -hmm. there's people that are just out to rip you off and get away with as much stuff as they can. And they just, I call them do-low cats. I knew them. I stayed clear of them. Because those are the kind of cats that will come over your house and chill with you and then double back and rob you. As Mob Deep says, their days are numbered in low digits. You know, you don't you don't make it. And I would not advise people to play the game dirty. Would you? No, no I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. 
Enough said. People say, that's ice. You around here, you in your 50s, you still alive. I'm saying, I think it's because I played the game fair. I mm -hmm. think that's one of the reasons. I don't have enemies. I don't got people looking for me and mad at me and plotting, spending their life. You know what I'm saying? Because when you cross people, some people make it their life mission to get that To get revenge. even. To get even. You know, and you, you don't know? need people out there to spend in their whole life. I hate two things, trucks in the fast lane and fake people. Yeah, and that was street knowledge. Final Level Podcast, Mick Benzo and Ice-T. This is TV. We got Marco Andretti in the building. We gonna talk about television. You know what, Mickey, I'm watching TV the other day. I'm on the set of Law & Order. I'm doing my thing, and I notice in daytime television. Daytime television is the most toxic environment for anybody to just sit through. Because all you got is judge shows with people fighting. Right. Right. Then you got uh, Are You the Father? You know. Right. M uh, Maury trying right. to just destroy people's lives with that bullshit. And then you oh, got, see? Then you got, it's crazy. You think you've seen people dance, you ain't never heard no, seen a motherfucker dance till you hear the words, you are not the father. Oh, they dance their ass <laughs> off, don't they? Yes. They start oh, boogieing, man. they start Woo! making up improv shit. So, <laughs> Alex Haley comes up in the bitch. So, but I noticed, I'm like, why are all the, all the talk show hosts they're females. females now. They're females now. And they ain't married. They ain't got no man. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me all of all the talk show females. Most of them. Most of them don't have no man, but they got all of the right answers. They got on answers. How you, on how you keep your man. On relationships. They ain't got no man. You oh, know, shit. you look at Oprah. I mean, she, I don't know. She's suspect. Yeah. Gail. Yeah. yeah. She's suspect. <laughs> okay, we're going to leave it at that. You know, we used to have a term, you know, when you come home and your girl's been watching daytime television and all of a sudden she just goes off on you. We used to call that getting Oprah. Like when you'd come they in. They do the you, Oprah when you come home. Come huh? home. Yeah, and I just wanted to bring it up to you. You play too many video games, and I just watched on TV today that if you play video games, you don't love me. I'm like, bitch. So where'd she get that from? <laughs> what the fuck? I just came from work. <laughs> And, I'm tired. We, and then she get that off Make the a nigga a sandwich. off the Oprah show who don't even have a man. Get so basically, we telling the women who don't have men, you ain't know nothing about no goddamn relationships. Relationship experts, shut the fuck up. And then you over here, you watching somebody getting on there, and they're like, "Okay, judge, and this is my sister, and my sister, and she stole my clothes, and she took my blouse." And uh, and she took it, and I never got it back. And how much is the blouse worth? Forty dollars. It costs more than forty dollars to park at the courthouse. Exactly, it's fifty-five. And you're, and you're suing somebody for forty dollars? I mean, listen. Once again, the moral of the story, into TV, is uh, daytime television is toxic. Women who don't have men are not experts. Church. On the Final Level podcast, we talked about Rondo Stitch Robertson and my contractor being sick because it's all about male awareness with us. We care about your health. Childhood obesity is down 43% because young infants are consuming less sugary drinks. Final Level people, that might seem like some great news, but that change has not occurred with older children and adults. We need to eat healthier. Yet eating healthy and delicious snacks has never been easier than with Nature Box. Now, as many of you final level people know, Nature Box is incredibly affordable. It's made with wholesome ingredients and it's 100% nutritionist approved. And the snacks taste great. And I ain't eating it if it don't taste good, okay? Listen, it's like Christmas every month when that box arrives and it's like tax season when you finish it. Also, they got a variety of different snacks to meet everybody's taste buds, okay? And we see many of you tweeting your boxes to me on Final Level at, uh, on Twitter. So I want to shout y'all out. Here goes Zach Speavy. Thank you. Daniel Kimball. Thank you. And especially Joe Cini. She started off with one nature box and ended up getting three because she couldn't get enough of that pearl crunch. You know what I'm saying? So thanks for trying out nature box and letting it blow your mind and supporting us. For 50% off your first Nature Box, go to naturebox.com slash iced tea. That is N-A-T-U-R-E-B-O-X dot com slash I-C-E-T. Okay? Thanks again to Nature Box for keeping our stomachs full and the podcast free. Keep on tweeting us pictures of your Nature Box and let us know your thoughts. 
Hey, what's up? This is Ice-T. You're on the podcast. What's happening? Nothing much. Freezing out here. Who is this? Amanda. Where are you, Amanda? Nebraska. How would you describe uh, this season of SVU? Uh, I'm really happy with this season of SVU. Uh, You know, uh, every year, we don't really know where we're going. We've had a lot of changes this year uh, with Bells are leaving and the captain leaving but uh you guys the fans have held in there and kept the ratings up and we're really excited we only have seven more shows to go and you know me i just want to make sure that we get picked up for a 16th season me too (laughs) do you love the show i really love the show i watch it every day oh okay all right cool all right well thank you for calling in you're welcome Hey, what's up? This is Ice-T. Uh, you talking to Marco Andretti and Mick Benzo. What's happening? Hey, what's up, guys? This is Elena from Chicago. What's cracking? <laughs> Nothing much. It's pretty cold out today. Um, I got to say, I'm a huge fan of the podcast. You guys are awesome. I love listening to that stuff. You guys keep it real. Um, I love you on SVU. Got to watch that shit all day. All that. Anyway... So, I just wanted to ask, as um, a very successful career in film and um, music, how would you suggest or give advice to somebody who wants to get exposure in that kind of thing? I really like singing, actually, and I'm trying to get get the ball rolling on that. Can you sing? Oh, yeah, I can sing. Well, let me hear let's, something. Let's hear something. Give us some acapella right now. This is your break right now. You wanted one. All right, absolutely. Um... Uh, okay, um, all of you love all of me, all your curves and all your edges, all your perfect They things. call it already for you, girl. They call it already for you. This is the Final Level Podcast. That was real nice. They call it for you. They, they got, got a, a phone more call. Work. I mean, the phone, the phone, the, 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 the <laughs> our phone's lit up. Hey, you know what? Let me tell you something. It's really hard to tell how good you can sing over the phone, but the fact that you were willing to actually just audition over the phone is a plus. You feel me? Because a lot of people, I would have said, hey, call, uh, or sang, and uh, well, I'm not ready, and I would have had something negative to say. But the fact that you did sing, and you sound decent over the phone, good luck. I mean, how do you get into the business? I think the first thing is you got to find somebody it close to you that's really making records okay find somebody that's really making records not someone who says they're a musician or this or that find somebody who really is making records now prior to that you need a demo do you have a demo um actually i gotta set up this summer and get you know some recording in okay okay because if you wanted to impress me and you met me on the street You can't just impress me by singing to me. You need to have something that you can hand to me. Then you got to realize that out of 50 of those you hand, only one of them is going to get listened to, you know? So it's like you got to work the law averages. My first thing, I can't give you a full seminar, but get in the studio, record some music, and then after you get some music recorded, try to find somebody who really has made a record. Here's the key. Don't waste time with people that have never really made a record because they're just going to waste your time and charge you a lot of money. Well, thank you so much. That's some pretty good advice. And um, I look forward to following it and see where it goes. And yeah, maybe good luck I'll with it. Someday and, and, and any, maybe like, hear me in person. And like anything else, if that's what you want to do, Practice your skill, you know, don't stop singing. You really try to sing better than you sung last year. You know, you, you definitely got to, you know, if that's that's your craft, then, then work on it, master it. And that's the game, right? You know, you just keep moving forward on it and getting better. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, thank you for calling in. Uh, T? Hey, what's up? This is Ice-T. You got Marco Andretti in the building with Mick Benzo. What's happening? Oh, what's up, guys? This is Cisco calling from Cali. Okay, what's up, Cali? What's up, love? Yeah, I just want to know, let you guys know I love this podcast. I'm a big fan. Um, I was listening to that one time you guys were talking about um, Hunger Games and talking about not reading the book. Yes. Yeah, so 
I remember you guys were talking about how you said, oh, if they don't know how to hunt, they know how to kill people like this, how, why don't they go out and hunt? But right. In the book, they right. kind of explain that, you know, you can't, if you read the book, they say, oh, yeah, they can't hunt because they're, they're capturing these people who are trying to hunt. They're not even allowed to hunt. But I got I it. Like, got that's it. Why the books usually give a little bit more detail. So what you're saying, so you called me... You called me from Cali to tell me that if I read the book, I wouldn't have made that stupid comment. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, you know, the book. Uh, what's called- your name? Francisco. Uh, you hit me on the ice and Mick at Gmail, didn't you? You left that message on there, right? That's right. Yeah, I was trying to help. Yeah, that's right. That's me. Yep. Yeah, we appreciate it, though. And next time we might read the book. Yeah, we might read the book. Yeah, check it out. It's really good. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right, Mickey. This dude just told me I should have read the book. You telling me I should read the book, man. All these book motherfuckers. That's why I go see the movie, and I don't care. Hey, yo, this is Ice-T. Who's this? Sheldon. All right, Sheldon. Marco Andretti and Mick Benzo in the building. What's up? Hey, I, I since, you, since the art of rap, since you directed that, are you going to actually start doing a movie? Yeah, I, I want to do. I want to do. Um, you know, dramas and, and basically features. I just need somebody with some money so that they can pay for the movie. You got some money? Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I need twenty million. I want to do a blockbuster. <laughs> When's the new Body Count album coming out? <laughs> it's coming out June tenth. June tenth, eh? Yes, sir. I got sir. a tattoo body count on my chest. What? Yeah, the first the cover from your first album, I got it on my chest. You got the cop killer on your chest? I right, take yeah. a picture of that and send it to Ice and Mick at gmail.com. Yeah. Take yeah, a picture, yeah. send it to Ice and Mick at gmail.com. We'll put that up on the website. All right, I'll do that. All right, your th- th- does your man on your chest say cop killer on it or does it say body count? It says body count and it says cop killer real small on the top and it goes there goes the neighborhood on the bottom. Wow, you got balls. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> All right, man. Well, well I, when I got it done, the guy's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. That's right, man. At your own risk. When I first, when I first listened to your albums, I, I t- you had a goatee and everything. I was trying to grow my goatee and I had just had stubbles, right? It, was, uh, it looked pretty ridiculous, but uh, yeah, it took me a while to get it all folded. in. Not stubbles. <laughs> hey, man, you might be the best caller today. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was kind of upset too because I, I was hoping that you guys were going to make a season throw, uh, season four of Ice Love Coco, but I guess I, I seen the comments on that that they're trying to make you guys do shit that you guys don't do, right? So now we just moving. I can we, understand we, that. No, we just moving to another project. We got another project coming up. Don't worry about us. We gonna be all right. Hey, but you seem like a hundred thousand percent Ice T fan, man. So I got nothing but respect for you. Hopefully, I'll see you at the car show. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. And I got all your books. I got all your movies. I got all your albums. And they're all on tape, too. I don't have any of your CDs. I just got them on tape. You are the motherfucking man. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And the tapes last longer than CDs. They do, don't they? But yeah, you got all NWA tapes still on CD, uh, on tape. So. I know. You know, they call them mixtapes, and they ain't even got tape. Yeah. Hey, man, we out of here, man. Stay up, man. I feel like you should be knocking at my front door any minute. All right. Have a good one, man. Take care. Hello? Hey, what's up? This is Ice, Marco, and uh, Mickey. What's happening? I'm actually looking into acting, and I was wondering if you had any advice for someone looking into that career field. Have you gone to any acting classes? Um, Not really. There's a... at my high school but it isn't like a true true uh class well anything that you want to do professionally you have to take classes for you have to take time to learn so i would advise you to get into some acting uh you know classes or workshops first uh that way you're gonna make some contact so if you do get a break you know what you're doing yeah, I was uh, actually looking into uh, SVU to try to do something there. Well, how are you going to get on SVU if you haven't been taught how to act? <laughs> no, I'm talking about like in the future if it's the show is still running, which I hope it is. My favorite. Okay, well, I'll be looking for you to come and guest star with me. That would be amazing. Okay, I'll get you a script. Talk to you later. 
All right, what's up? This is Ice-T, Marco Andretti, and Mick Benzo. Talk to me. Hi. <laughs> wow, I am so excited. I'm shaking. Who is this? Um, my name is Sine. I'm from Atmore, Alabama. I really just want to tell you how big of a fan I was of Law & Order SVU. I'm a diehard addict. Um, I'm a really big fan of fan, and, and I'm a really big fan of Ice-T. That's I love right. you, and I love your character. And thank you. I, I need you. You know, I got a lot of haters out there, so I need my fans. Oh, uh, let them hate. I just quoted you on Twitter yesterday. So That's... I don't, I'm not a hater. I just hate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's going on in your life? What you want to talk about? Besides school and watching Law & Order all night, I, um, I'm a big music fan. I listen to music. I play music. Um... What do you I play? I wondered if you had any tips for a person who's trying to pursue a, a musical. I heard I heard you tell the girl about acting because I was going to ask you about that, but you already told her what's up with that. You got to go to school. What 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 do you play in music? What do you what what you play an instrument? Yeah, I, I play piano, clarinet, drums, uh, anything I put my hands on. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. Can I tell you this? And this is a compliment. You are way further into the music industry than most people, because most people nowadays want to get in the music industry. They can't sing. They think they can rap. They can't play any instrument, but yet and still they want to be in the music industry. Do you yeah. want to hear? You know what? I do want to hear. Right now yeah. you are on final level idol. Go. Okay, well, I know the girl ahead of me, she sung um, All of Me by John Legend, and I, I think that's funny because I just learned how to play that song last night. I came in here. I was in my feelings, and I started playing. Well, play. do it. So if I, I'm, I'm going to try to play it for you, and I'm actually really nervous. I'm shaking. Nervous so don't mess, count. Nervous don't get you paid. <laughs> nervous, deal with them. You know what I think is really cool? I think the fact that you just have a portable piano you walk around with, that's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded really good. That's very impressive. Yeah, yeah. thank you very okay, much. Okay, that's Marissa Hawkins. I know that I love her to death and I'm a big fan. Thanks so much. Thanks All for right. playing that piano. That was good. Okay, there it is. The fifth final level podcast wrapping it up. Mickey, this is becoming really fun. You know, I kind of like this here week's event because of the... Uh, the way that we got the phone callers in and they were so spontaneous on doing things. You never know what could happen inside this podcast that Ice and McBenzo got here. But at this moment, we're about to close it out. And I want to make sure that all our family, we have no fans on here. Marco Andretti was in the building from the Indianapolis 500. This Indy car racing. You okay. Did? It's the whole thing, everything. Just give Long it all Grand up. Yeah. Grand Prix, you see, you heard about it. The Grand Poobah. His brother Luke is in the house. Nick's in the house. He brought yeah. security, too. Yeah, Big Neil. Big Neil. Big Neil is, Neil is in a goddamn building Big at the podcast. <laughs> we got My son, son, Sir Johnny. And they brought that beautiful dog. Moody. Moody's in the building. Moody, that's the dog. That's hey, hey, you know what? Let me say one thing. I'm very proud of my son. This is we'll find sitting out of this. Little yeah. Ice went out and got a job. Now my son's 22. I told him, do not break the law because I don't accept any collect calls. I'm not getting you out of jail. So instead of selling weed, right? That's all. This right. dude does not. He's not going to sell no weed. He decides he's going to sell clothes based on weed. But hey, that's cool. You know why? Because there are a lot of weed heads that like to wear. They little clothing, they t-shirts and hats, you know. So that's kind of cool. So little this little ice. nigga found a loophole. Little I ice. told him, don't sell no weed, so he sells weed clothes. Little Ice, that's real fly. I'm and, going, Uncle Mick's going with you on this one, Little Ice. And, Did you got a website on it? Yeah, yeah, the website is www.hempandrelax, H-E-M-P-A-N-D-R-E-L-A-X, Dot com and he got some cool clothes on there. Got a little sexy model and everything cracking up in there. I'm like, okay, you know, chip off the old block. Hey, little ice man, I, I definitely appreciate you doing that, man. Uncle Mix riding with you on that one, man. That's real fly. We have no fans in the podcast, nothing but family. Check us out at iceandmick at gmail.com. And fellas, remember this: mailawarenessfoundation.org.
to all the family that's been part of this podcast since the first one. Now we're on the fifth one. Our numbers are growing. Can you dig it? I'm not going to stop till we get a million motherfuckers on this podcast. You understand me? And we're going to ride over all the other podcasts. If you ain't with us, you without us. You understand what I'm saying? And if you don't like us, you can eat a hot bowl of dicks. That's how I'm living. 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 